Hey everyone, welcome to class four of manual software testing training. In this class, I'm going to discuss about the test levels and many more topics related to test levels and types of testing. So let's get started and let's see what exactly is test level when we talk about the test level. Okay. Now basically there are four different test levels in software testing and that's standard that in the software testing, whenever you are going in any of the project, your testing will be classified in any one of these four test levels. The first test level is the component testing or unit testing and I'll differentiate basically there will be a lot of there is a lot of confusion around component testing is separate unit testing is separate but from the ISTQB point of view or if you're preparing for the certification you can consider component testing and unit testing same. Now there is a very fine line between the difference between unit testing and component testing and I'll explain that in a moment but then that's the first level. The second level of of testing is integration testing the third is system and the fourth is acceptance now do not get confused with test levels and types of testing right so I'll cover the types of testing but briefly test levels are the different levels based on which you test the application so for example when we talk about the unit testing right or the component testing so it is the testing of the smallest testable part of the application for example if you are testing any of the website right now for you as a tester when you are testing any of the web application what could be the smallest testable part or component so if there is a login functionality right now you won't be testing the login method or code that has been written by the developer right as a manual tester you will be testing the real login functionality available on the web page so you launch the web page you will go ahead and try to login using the valid username and password you will provide valid user valid password and click on login so for you as a manual tester as a tester the component testing or the unit testing is basically that smallest testable component that you can test independently okay now when we talk about unit testing right there is confusion that unit testing is more relevant for the developers okay and that's absolutely correct because unit testing in the real projects you will be using the term for developers doing the unit testing of the code that they are writing so the smallest testable method or class whatever they have written if they can test it in bit independently that is the unit testing from the develop developers perspective but from testers perspective component testing and unit testing or unit testing is basically the testing of of the smallest individual unit that you as a tester and testing team can test independently okay now because as a black box tester or as a functional tester you do not have visibility to the code so for you the component testing is actually the unit testing and that's why when we say component testing or unit testing is a test level from the testers perspective it is a little bit different from the development perspective it is a little bit different or from white box perspective perspective white box testing perspective it is more testing the individual code units or the methods that and that can be tested independently so that's the first level of testing now when we talk about integration okay so if we take an example of say for example a car right now the car if you think about the smallest testable unit within the car if you try to segregate all the things around the car right so if I talk about the wheel is wheel the smallest testable part if I talk about the whole wheel so absolutely not not right because wheel can be further divided into different smallest testable unit because wheel consists of the rim which can be tested separately the tire can be tested separately right it, it makes another unit then there is a ball bearing within the wheel that can be tested separately so the smallest unit that can be tested within the wheel is basically a component or unit right in terms of car similar is true for the software the smallest unit that can be tested independently right not by just entering or it, it needs to be tested independently independently because if you see the ball bearing right so what all can be tested within the ball bearing even the small bearings the small uh, components of that bearing can be tested for durability how much strength they are right so they can be tested independently so it can go up to that level now if you if you think that you can break those and then test that's not you you don't need to break anything any independent unit the smallest unit 
of any of the hardware product or the software product that can be tended, tested independently is the component testing or unit testing, right? Now, when we integrate, when we go about the test level integration, it is basically saying that you integrate two independent tested unit together that need to work together. For example, the ball bearing, okay, or assembled ball bearing with, with, with all of the tested, individually tested components. And then you test the whole ball bearing for uh, the, the overall rotation and uh, the number of rotations. All of that is basically saying you are testing the integrated ball bearing right it has been integrated then you again put that ball bearing into the rim and then the tire that's again the integration testing of that whole wheel together right so that's what integration testing is in the physical sense in in the automobile industry similar you can correlate with all other examples around you right in the software it is absolutely similar the software component or the unit the smallest one that has been tested for example login functionality right now login will happen only after the registration so registration can be tested separately to see whether registration of the user is successful right from the testing perspective so you test the registration once registration has been successful then you want to test that the same user that has registered is it able to log in right so basically then registration is integrated with the login module so this is more of integrated testing of registration and login together right so this is what integration testing is of two modules now when all these modules are integrated together then the overall integration testing it basically it's more of an incremental approach for the integration testing right so this is what the second level of testing is which is integration testing now when we talk about the third level of test level which is system testing so system as a whole right when all of the components that are required within the system that make the system independent or that can be tested independently okay then that is what system testing is when we talk about the car aspect when you integrate everything, all the four wheels, the, the body, everything, engine, right? And you test the whole car as one particular system the whole system that is or the, the car that is basically moving you test all of the functionalities of the car that is system as a whole right it's a complete system so that's what basically system testing is all about in the software sense or in the application sense it is absolutely similar so you have all the modules or the components units integrated together to make it as a whole system for example an e-commerce application you have registration module you have login module you have the app to cart module you have the checkout module you have payments you have other order processing back-end office modules all of them integrated together to make it as a integrated system basically or the whole system that can be tested as a whole with end-to-end -end functionality is what system testing is all about now when we talk about the acceptance testing okay now before i move to acceptance testing you might come across system testing and system integration testing or sit okay so if i talk about system testing it is system as a whole which is just that particular system without integration with any of the third party systems right now e-commerce application won't be having all of the capabilities and modules built in within one monolith architecture right or the complete system in its own there will be some integration with third party systems as well right for example for taking the payment you might be also taking payments through paypal right now paypal for any of the e-commerce application is not built independently independently or build within that e-commerce website right you pick any of the websites or uh, e-commerce website you pick amazon you pick flipkart you pick any of the e-commerce website they have different payment gateways or payment capabilities so paypal is one of it so when you integrate these website with the third party payment module which is say for example paypal then that testing of this whole system which is e-commerce website or the, the application with the third party integrated payment platform which is PayPal testing it together that is what system integration testing is SIT so ST and SIT there is a fine difference system is just testing your system that you have built when we talk about system integration testing it is system integrated with different third-party applications and then you testing the interface and the communication between your system and the third-party systems together 
right so that's what system testing and at the same level or just a level further system integration testing lies but in terms of test levels the classification is just unit integration system and acceptance there is no system integration testing because in system testing you have both of those criteria being taken care of okay now when we move to the acceptance testing so acceptance testing is all about whether the software or the application that has been built is fit for use for the end user right whether i as an end user can accept the system is it is it fulfilling my need as an end user or the customer right so whenever there is a software being developed or a product being developed it is based on some requirements so if i'm the customer i will articulate the requirement i'll say i want these functionalities in my e-commerce website i want to sell some products so i want basically the registration functionality i want the login functionality i want the login functionality using different uh, social media accounts then i want add to cart check out all of that so once all of that has been built and tested then in the acceptance phase either the business analyst or the stakeholders within the organizations they will do one round of acceptance testing and along with that customer might also be involved in the acceptance testing life cycle and see whether the functionalities that are being provided into the application and the software fulfill the needs of the end user and the customer so that's what the acceptance testing is all about okay so these are four different test levels and test levels are not the same as testing types okay now what is the difference so testing a testing level is different at different levels what level you do the testing right so you do a testing at very low level which is unit or at the code level or very small unit level then you integrate together that's the integration testing you you incrementally in, integrate the components and units then you again do the whole integration together you move further it is more of a system testing and then when the software is ready to be accepted or product is ready to be accepted then you have the acceptance testing so these are different four levels okay now when we say about the types all the types of testing will somehow or the other will fall in these different test levels for example the regression okay regression can be done at any level like right? so for example unit in within unit testing phase as well there could be a regression test suite that developers have maintained during integration testing there is a regression suite being maintained during system testing there is a regression testing right usually in acceptance testing you do not do any regression testing because you have already executed regression testing prior to moving the product to the acceptance phase right so testing types can be present in any of these levels right so indirectly we can basically say that all the test levels right are testing types right so unit testing is a type integration testing is a type system testing is a type acceptance testing is also a type but not all testing types are test levels right so there are only four test levels and we can't say regression testing is also a level right it's not a level there are only four test levels but there are many testing types which we'll discuss okay so if we move further so if we move further here there is similar thing so a little bit detail around what exactly unit testing it is absolutely same what what i have been talking about right so unit testing is testing about the smallest testable part of the software system right it is isolated from the remainder of the code and then tested to de determine whether it works correctly so if developer is doing they'll isolate it separately the code the, the the method that they can test independently and then determine whether that in is independently testable or not right and then stubs and drivers are used to replace the missing components in unit testing right so this is very important concept that whenever you are doing the uh, unit testing because you are testing independently right those components you might be using stubs or driver and developers use it a lot we'll also understand how you use stubs and drivers and what exactly the stubs and drivers are okay so if we talk about stubs and drivers so stub is called from the software component right now say for example we have module you know login which is a module okay and then there are b and c modules right so login module is there but then the module that 
actually or registration say for example a is the registration module right now in terms of tester in terms of testing or manual tester if, if they are testing this registration functionality now the registration functionality is there the user can enter the details okay or there is some interface available to the to the tester wherein tester can put the details in the form and submit those details right but then the actual registration that needs to happen that logic and all of the data that needs to be populated into the, into the database is not ready yet that whole code logic is not ready yet so in that particular case the tester or the team just wants the testing team to verify that whenever there is a submission on the registration page when all the information is being entered on the page and submitted the appropriate error response or the appropriate success response is being displayed and the ui is at least working properly so in that particular case what usually development team does is they create these tubs okay so for example this is the registration module which is a which is a form okay a web form wherein first name last name all of the details are there date of birth and then register button and then user enters those details so what happens there is a middleware right so middleware will send all of these details and then because the rest of the code which pushes that data into the database and does all the business logic is not built there so they'll create a quick dummy code right which will just accept this detail from this particular page right from this call and just respond it either success or failure based on the values that are being defined on the page or being inputted on the page okay so that dummy code or throwaway code that is uh, coded by the team or developed by the team is known as stub okay to test something which is there which is ready because the ui is ready uh, the tester can enter all the detail on the ui and then click on the register button then they can also see that if the response comes as success the success message should get displayed and then if the response comes as failure the failure message uh, message accordingly should get displayed so in that case if this is not ready this can still be tested with the help of stubs and that's what basically the stub is okay now if we talk about uh, this stub with api testing it will be really clear because see for example we have the api call ready here so usually this will be an api call which is application programming interface so one interface talking to another uh, interface this is the ui interface which is basically when we put all the information the information will be passed through the xml or json file converted into json file over the internet over the network to this module and here because it is not ready the dummy response will be sent by the stub okay so that's what this stub is it is very widely used during the unit testing developers use it a lot but in case of the manual testing as well you will come across that yes if some module is not ready developers will develop a stub and you will be able to go ahead and send the request to the stub and get appropriate response at and at least test the scenarios that have been available and built for this registration module which is a module in our case okay so this is what stub is all right now we talk about the driver okay so driver calls a component to be tested right now this is opposite of stub okay now say for example the registration business logic is available everything is available right but then this user interface is not available okay this a module is not available so in that case this you can correlate with api testing right or web service testing wherein you get the web service right and in that service call you either pass the registration detail as a json file if it is the rest web service it is it supports uh, json or if it is a uh, soap which uh, wherein you pass the xml um, uh, then you can populate those registration details into those xml tags and then send that request without the ui being ready right so these tools basically the api testing tool you can consider them as a driver right so you are just calling the the endpoint and then you are sending the details and those details are getting processed because registration module the business logic pushing the data into the database all of that is ready right so if you send the details there you are just wanting to verify that the response is actually returned and displayed appropriately and it won't be displayed on the ui because your ui is not ready in this case so in case your ui is not ready or the lower level components are ready the business logic is ready lower components are ready and you want to test the response of the lower components uh, and your ui or the the 
higher level components are not ready or units are not ready then you use the drivers and api testing is kind of you can correlate api testing with this particular approach that drivers anything that supports the api in independent api responses from the business logic uh, is your uh, basically driver any of those tools some places you might require specific drivers to be written or developed so developers in that case again they will write a driver so that it helps you to test these lower level components api testing is just an example and tools are just an example but many places you will see that developers will help you to get that driver written or dummy piece of code written now during unit testing developers anyways use stubs and drivers very frequently okay so this is basically what stubs and drivers are now if we talk about more details around the component unit testing right so it may include testing of functional and non-functional characteristics as well okay so it's not just that unit testing is all about functional testing it can include functional as well as non as well as non-functional aspect of any of the component for example any memory leaks robustness invalid stressful environment right so performance how is the unit performing on different roles so anything can be possible either related to functionality or related to non-functional aspect for example robustness structural stress load all of that can be possible in this level of testing right if we move next further so it is typically done by developers but not necessarily right i mean developers will do unit testing at their code level right but if you talk about the exam point of view or component because component unit are same so if developer is doing it so yes it is at the code level and mostly developers will be doing but in case you are doing so for you for the testing team the component testing or unit is the smallest independent unit or component that you are going to test right now if mostly because unit testing is highly correlated with developers and development uh, that is happening and it's done in that phase so it will be mostly done by developers right you won't be doing any white box testing as a tester as a manual tester you won't be doing it okay now this component testing why it is mostly done by developer because it, because it needs access to code okay and it's done with the development environment it needs supports with, with the development environment and defects are typically fixed as soon as they are found and during the unit testing process there is no formal defect logging process because it's done by the developer so they write that uh, unit testing code themselves and run that code and as and when they find issues they fix in that cycle itself there is no formal process but say for example you are doing the you know the the component testing of an independent unit which which you consider as a independent right so login functionality even though you think that is it is independent it is independent only for testers right if we talk about the developer or unit test testing perspective even the login module is made by different independent testable units that developers have already tested so that is why when we talk about the lowest level or component or unit testing it is more relevant for the developers because it because it is uh, your component that for you is the unit is an integrated system for the developer right so it's difference in the perspective okay but in software space in the testing in the software testing when we say component testing unit testing just correlate that or ensure that this is mostly for the developers and done at the code level okay when we say integration testing yes now it is more of integrated testing of the interfaces between components right so integration of the components so for example there are different methods that developers has written when all of that integrated together will make one integrated system for your component for you right so or a module for you so for example login module right so that module when you are testing even though it is independent for you you can say it is unit testing right for you as a tester but actually it is an integration testing you are testing that login module or in registration module as a whole together okay so integration testing testers can concentrate only on the integration points right so how the client server you know communication works how the middleware all of that communication so integration aspect how two units are working together when integrated together okay now integration testing test interactions not only to the unit but different parts of the system like file system uh, database is the information flowing to the database how is the inter interface right hardware software all of that is also tested 
okay now what are the different levels of integration testing so if we talk about different levels so there is component integration testing and system integration testing as i explained right so system integration testing and component integration testing so when we say component integration testing which is unit integration testing right so it is integrating the smallest testable units that developer has tested and then testing the integrated unit for example this login module will be again integrated is an integrated unit is an integrated component based on integration of different small methods and classes that developer has written right so when you test that login module you are basically testing the component or you are doing component integration testing right then component integration testing is done after component or unit testing right so once the developer has done the unit testing they'll integrate it all together and then you will be kind of doing that component integration testing right so you uh, many people say that yes we are doing component testing or module testing but it's actually component integration testing and when we say component or unit testing it is actually our testing uh, at the developer level or the code level okay when we say system integration testing i have already explained that system integration testing test integration between different systems right not the whole system different systems like paypal integration paypal is third party system okay so it is done mostly after system testing is complete so one system as a whole is complete then you test the system integration or do the system integration testing now this is done to identify the cross cross platform platform issues which may arise after integrating the system with other systems right so for example after integrating with paypal has the payment is the payment going properly if somebody is trying to make the payment using paypal after integration integration with different payment gateway are all the card payments getting through successfully right all of that okay now what are different approaches of integration testing so if we talk about approaches the first approach is basically big bang integration testing as the name suggests big bang it is you just go ahead and integrate all of the components or units that have been built together as one system and then go ahead and start testing the whole system okay together the other approach is incremental integration testing which is ideally mostly followed in many places that incrementally the units are integrated together and then tested that yes this this in this integration is working fine with these two two units then one more unit in it is integrated then the system the the integration of all three units is being tested and that way the incremental integration testing happens and even in incremental integration testing there are different approaches top down bottom up and functional incremental let's see what exactly they are so if we talk about big bang integration testing right so in big bang integration testing all of the components systems uh, or all of the small units are integrated together as a whole okay now it has a big disadvantage the, the, the advantage and disadvantage is so advantage of big bang approach is that everything is finished before integration testing starts right so stubs and drivers are not required in this case okay that's the advantage because everything needs to be finished only when you can integrate and create the whole system right so login needs to be ready registration needs to be like ready payment need to be ready checkout everything needs to be ready so you can integrate everything together in a big bang approach and test the system as a whole now what is the disadvantage disadvantage is if something goes wrong right during the testing if, if something goes wrong that something is not working it becomes really difficult to trace the root cause of the failure now if you are integrating just two units together and something fails you know that there is something wrong with the communication between these two units that you have integrated but with big bang approach if you have integrated 100 units together it will be really difficult to see where exactly the failure is happening that's the disadvantage it disadvantage now if we talk about incremental integration testing so in the incremental approach all programs are integrated one by one and testing is done after every integrated step it has the advantage that defects are found early and are easily identifiable that yes because of this integration this defect might have been caused right disadvantage is that you will need stubs and drivers which is again time consuming and is a throwaway code because it is just coded or developed to help the testing in the incremental integration right what is top down approach right so incremental integration testing is again three different approaches so top down approach so testing takes place from top to bottom say for example ui is ready 
okay so flow follows the control flow or architectural structure right so when we say control flow it is basically say for example ui is ready your ui it will start from the high level which is the ui the end the top level of your layer application layer right which is graphical user interface now from there it will then follow or try, uh, from there the overall integration will start happening okay so in the top down approach for example ui is ready there is a registration page now from there the registration module will be developed and then integrated together okay so that approach when it is followed from top to bottom is basically top down approach now top down approach utilizes stubs right to replace replace unfinished components and the top down le top top level component of the hierarchy is tested first with the lower unfinished component it integrates with being replaced by stubs right so ui is ready the registration logic is not ready so stub will replace that and in the ui you will pass some data which will interact with the stub stub will respond back the success or failure response based on the data that you put on the in the ui and send it so you will test the ui so that's how the overall testing will happen so once the ui is tested yes this page is fine this this response all the error codes are being implemented fine then then this stub will be basically implemented and will actually be replaced with the real business logic or the module right and that's how it keeps on growing with the top down approach okay now if we talk about bottom up approach it takes from the bottom to the control flow say for example uh, the lowest level components say for example registration functionality right so all the database say say the schema that is required to store all the uh, relevant detail of registration that will be tested first then the business logic the code will be written which will push the data to the database then that will be tested and then to replace all of that uh, the driver will be required as ui is missing right so any of the missing component in bottom up approach will be substituted with the driver so that's what the bottom up approach when you start from the lowest level component first and then move further to the most highest level component which is basically graphical user interface right now the, these the, this is basically about the bottom up approach okay now if we talk about the system testing so in the system testing testing the behavior of the whole system right so similar stuff that we have discussed it is complete system integrated together and testing it independently uh, independently system as a whole right not with third party systems when we say third party systems integration it is system integration testing right so the whole e-commerce application independently tested together for registration add to cart checkout all of that that is what system testing is all about okay rest you can go ahead and read through the slide it's similar information that i have already covered few more information about system testing so system testing should investigate both functional and non-functional requirement which is basically you know um, can be true for any of the levels okay and mostly in system testing you specify black box testing techniques specification based right should be used and um, uh, to test the system's functional requirement you can also do white box testing techniques structure based te te uh, techniques uh, and they may be used to assess the thoroughness of the testing basically so for example the whole system is integrated and you want to see the overall coverage right the code coverage based on the test cases that have been written or being tested in the system so in that case this white box techniques or structure based techniques can all also be utilized in the system testing phase but you'll get a help around these techniques with the developers okay now what are some of the test cases for system testing so system testing includes test cases based on software requirement specification what exactly the software should do what is the business process what end user actually wants right you will write test cases based on that in your system test system testing phase right then high level description of the system behaviors interaction with the operating system the performance non-functional characteristics are there any risks so these are some of the scenarios or things that you need to consider when you are trying to do system testing or document system testing okay now let's move to the acceptance testing okay so when we say acceptance testing acceptance testing starts after system testing is done and as the name suggests it is to ensure whether the system or the software that has been built is it acceptable to the end user right now if say for example requirement says i need a car and the car needs to have the four wheels right and you have the car but the wheels are not at the right place 
okay there are four wheels in the car but they are at the top of the car okay at the roof of the car so as per the requirement as per the requirement the requirement is fulfilled right so there is a car okay the car structure is there engine is there everything is there and then the wheels are at the top of the roof is that car usable right absolutely not so these type of things are being tested in the acceptance criteria in the acceptance testing is the software is the product that is being delivered okay to use or is it fit for use even though it is fulfilling all the requirement is it you know even valid or even make sense to use the way the requirements are being implemented right so that's what is being taken care into the acceptance testing phase and it is basically the responsibility of the customers stakeholders whosoever are involved the main goal is to establish confidence in the system right that yes system is doing what is what it is supposed to do right not it is being implemented as per the requirement but it is not actually usable system right so same example like car if the roof if the all four uh, wheels are you know attached at the roof is it a usable car it's not right so same thing in the software testing context uh, now test environment for acceptance testing should be in most as aspects will be should be equivalent to the production environment now whenever the acceptance testing is done it is uh, it is basically done in the test environment which is very re uh, which is kind of a replica of the production environment why because see all the test environment when we talk about the servers that are being used to test or to deploy the application they might have less ram or they might not have that much traffic right but in actual production you have different sort of systems uh, different ram level different uh, memory so the acceptance testing should take place in very close uh, environment which is as close as the production so that any issues that are because of these environment related issues can be uncovered in the acceptance testing phase itself right and then finding defects should not be the focus right so in the acceptance testing this should not be the focus the acceptance testing focus is to ensure that the software is fulfilling the end user needs the customer needs and is fit for use fit for purpose right so that's the focus of the acceptance testing phase right so it is not that you end up finding you know defects and that's why when when business or the end users they do the testing the, the criteria is not to find defects because all the initial phases the uh, the the main purpose is to basically see or the find defects in initial phases itself not in the acceptance testing phase right so this is what the acceptance testing is all about now acceptance testing can occur at more than one level right so there are there could be different levels of acceptance testing as well for example if there is a commercial of the shelf software which is caught software they may be accepted acceptance tested when a company or the organization is just commercially buying an application right say for example salesforce right or pega these applications or sap these applications are basically available out of the box that can be directly taken into and customized right as per the as per the uh, company's need so these are kind of commercial of the shell now in order to test these application it is more of acceptance testing that whether these applications will be able to fulfill the or are they fit for use for my business case for the company's business case so it can occur this test acceptance testing can occur for court software as well but all the court software commercial of the shelf software are internally tested anyways by default by their testers right so they are system tested and then released into the market but then based on my customized need is salesforce going to fit well is pega going to fit well that is what i can do as a organization so acceptance testing can be done for the court software then acceptance testing of the usability of the component may be done during the component testing okay so during the component testing as well acceptance testing can be done it's not that just last phase will be the acceptance testing but during the component testing as well you can do it acceptance testing of new functional enhancement may come before system testing right so it all of these levels depends where you have a need to do the acceptance testing or where you have a need or where you see that yes now we can do system test or you we can do acceptance testing right now what are different forms of acceptance 
testing. So if we talk about the forms of acceptance testing, there are many forms. So user acceptance testing, which is very common, right? Then there is operational acceptance testing. There is contract compliance, alpha, beta, right? So all of these are different forms of acceptance testing. So user acceptance testing is more of an umbrella term. So when we say user acceptance testing, once your system or software is being tested, then you go ahead and as an end user, go ahead and test the system from the end user perspective, right? Is it fit for use? Then when we say operational and contract, right? So these are more of contractual obligation, whether the system um, fulfills the operational agreements, whether it fulfills the contractual agreement, because many uh, government applications will require a specific level of security. Banking will require a specific level of compliance and security, right? So operational contract compliance, any of these um, contractual and compliance related will fall into the compliance and contractual acceptance testing. Alpha testing and beta testing are other forms of acceptance testing, which we'll discuss. Okay, so let's go ahead and see these one by one. So if we talk about the user acceptance testing, so the focus of user acceptance testing is focused on functionality and validates fitness for use. Okay, as we have uh, already seen and business holder and stakeholder are heavily involved and user acceptance testing, which is UAT test environment should be very close to production. That's what the user test user acceptance testing is. Now, when we say operational acceptance testing, it is about the operational criteria of the application or the software, which is basically saying that the system meets operational requirement for example you know uh, production acceptance testing is it is also you know known as production acceptance testing and some of the operational requirement could be like backup and restore is high availability required disaster recovery right what is the user management what what about maintenance rollback periodic checks about the security vulnerabilities okay so all of that comes into the operational acceptance testing now contract acceptance testing is about the contractual requirement okay so if there is any contract that has been formed between the customer and the company that is developing the software does the software fulfills the contractual obligations right um, or the contract acceptance it is basically um, fulfilling all of those requirement and verifying that yes whatever is being defined in the contract is actually being provided as the functionality in the software that's what contract acceptance testing is when we say compliance it is about the regulation based on the government legal medical so um, if there is something related to any of the compliance related it is compliance acceptance testing okay and especially in the regulation the government enforces it banking enforce it that if you are launching a product in banking space this should be the security level this your product should follow these standards right so all of that is compliance acceptance testing now what is alpha testing so alpha testing is another form of acceptance testing and it is the testing of application outside of the business owner and development team okay it is not within the development team it is within the software development within the organization but outside of the team that has actually built the application okay and alpha testing exposes the software to people and environment outside of the project team and done at the developer side for example you are working in a bank you will come across alpha testing very frequently you are working in a bank and there is an application in a bank that is internal application right and the the internal application will be used by overall employees within the bank. So in form of alpha testing, there will be some team within the bank development team that will build it. Now, once they have done all of the testing as part of the alpha testing, there will be some subset of the people within the bank. They are not part of this development team that has built this application. They will be provided access to actually test that application, right? So that is what alpha testing is. But this access is within that particular bank or organization right it is not outside of the organization so this is what alpha testing is now say for example same application will be used by people outside of the organization as well right so i'll come to that as well now alpha testing is mostly done by for courts okay to ensure internal acceptance testing and alpha testing provides feedback to the development team to the business owners right that how exactly the product that you have built works and this is internal feedback from the organization now what is beta testing Testing or field testing okay when we say beta testing it is done after alpha testing and beta testing is done in the potential by the potential or existing users 
customers and end users at the external side without developers involvement so even in the alpha testing developers and the development team is not involved they are only involved in the feedback how whatever feedback they get from the alpha testing team but in the beta field as well they are not involved and beta testing is done outside of the organization that has developed that application right and it is done to acquire feedback from the mass market now i'll take an example of say for example gmail if you see gmail um, there are a lot of other applications canva you'll see that uh, there is a beta option on many of the applications that do you want to enroll in the beta testing phase so what exactly they are looking for is from the end user say for example you are using some applications say i use canva okay and as part of the canva i can enroll for beta testing of the new features that they roll or as part of the jira user i can opt in for the new feature that they roll in so once i opt in i'll get the request to test any of the new features that are being rolled if i've been you know i've been enrolled as a beta tester or beta testing so new features will be ro rolled out to the set of end users who are using that application and they'll get all of that uh, extra features rolled out to just themselves not the mass market and then when they'll use they'll provide the feedback to the development team if there are any issues they'll fix it and then after beta testing the whole features re is released to the mass market it is very common for any of the social media applications right so only subset of users are rolled out a particular feature and then based on that the feedback is being gathered from those subset users so for example five percent of the facebook users will be shown new features based on their feedback company knows yes where the issues are and then they fix and then roll it to the wider market or the complete market right so that's what the beta testing is before beta testing these companies do the alpha testing testing within their organization as well right they don't straight away push the code to the beta testers to outside people they do internally alpha testing as well okay for all the features there will be a subset of users which is outside of the say for example facebook core development team they'll build something okay develop something test something and then there is a facebook business other team that is outside of that development team they will be um, provided opportunity to do alpha testing of those features once alpha testing is done all of the issues are being fixed based on the feedback from the facebook company users right whichever user or business users are there within the company then they release it to the end user which is beta testing okay or to acquire mass market feedback right so this is basically all about the test levels okay different types of test levels details all right and different levels of acceptance testing all of the different uh, acceptance testing types right so all of that has been basically covered now in the next class i'll be talking about test types right so i hope this class was helpful if you like this whole series and video please do share with your colleagues and with your uh, teammates if you're in college share with your uh, friends uh, who are looking for learning software testing it's absolutely free so go ahead share it and uh, ask many more people to join this course for free and learn for free and make or start the career in software testing so that's all i hope it was helpful thank you very much for